but as we do so, we'll start the recording and uh, we'll, we'll do a couple of other things. So first of all, if you all just want to introduce yourselves, Michael, Kalina, and, and Rona, before we dive in. Michael, you're first. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thanks so much for the opportunity to be here. Um, Michael Beam, uh, based in Raleigh, North Carolina, and um, been with Procore Technologies for a couple of years now on the customer marketing and advocacy team. And I'm Rona Aronson, Head of Customer Programs at BASE. Hey everyone, I'm Kalina, Head of Marketing Programs at BASE. Excited to see you all. Great, and, and just way of introduction, um, Rona, do you want to kick us off? Kind of feel like still <laughs> Go ahead, you started, you want to? So excited to have everyone here to join us um, on this uh, workshop, how to drive revenue growth through uh, referrals and excited to be hosting um, Gal and Michael. Um, we do encourage you to ask questions along the way. Uh, this is and this is a, a great opportunity. It's a small group. Um, go ahead, Doc. You can kick it off. Great. And yeah, definitely there's q and Ideally, ask questions there, but you can also ask them in the chat. We have, we'll cover it. We'll share some links during the session. We'll stop for questions. So really feel free to hit us with any other question you have. Um, and I think with that, we can kind of get started and kicked off. So let me um, share my screen as well. And we're recording this. So of course, we'll share the recording at the end of it as well. Cool. So what we want to talk today about is um, referrals, more specifically referrals in the B2B space, referral marketing programs, different types, strategies, roll-ups, and how eventually it helps drive revenue. Um, and we're, we've defined it more of a workshop than a webinar because we're going to dive into real practices, real steps. Again, giving you space to ask questions and make it much more of a much more of a interactive, many-to-many -many discussion versus just you know, Michael. I mean, reading his pitch to you, he will. But we're we're excited of, of answering your questions as well. Um, so that's a little bit about that. The agenda in general is. Um, like we said, talking a little bit about what referral marketing is, um, some program best practices, which again, Michael will dive into, uh, keeping it with Q&A and examples, and, and also some ideas of how to adopt it and things you can even start today and now. As always, we run a poll. Um, in the poll, we basically then um, raffle five audio bowls, audio books. So uh, basically, um, it's going to pop up any minute now and, and feel free to just, uh, um, you know, answer as we go. Okay, so before I dive into the referral and Michael go, takes takes us through it, A, we have another webinar coming up next week. Super excited about that one with Kevin Lau. Uh, for those who don't know him, he's a superstar and he's been uh, you know in this space for many years in companies like Marketo and now in F5. And he's gonna talk to us a little bit about very timely building teams as we think through 2024 budgets, building the ROI, how do you improve engagement both with your customers and advocates, but also with your internal, you know, uh, decision makers and, and, and get buy-in and so on. So very interesting webinar, very timely. Next week, please sign up. And in general, I, I, I kind of would love to have you join us for those who don't know us and, and haven't yet. Join all that we do. So we have the CLG campus. We have every month we have one or two webinars or workshops. Uh, if you're looking for a job and you see we're connected, let us know. We can help. If if we're if you're um, hiring, let us know. We can help. I know that at least one of our customers now, Nice, is hiring. Um, so happy to connect you with that. Um, Udemy is is hiring. Happy to connect with that as well. So just you know, feel free to reach out. Um, last thing, we're going to have two CMO events in um, November in the Bay Area. If your CMO is in the Bay Area please reach out to Kalina or to myself um, and, you know, let us know because it's it's kind of a, an exclusive event, but we'll be happy to invite them as well. Okay, so, oops, sorry. Um, so just about base for those who don't know us, customer marketing platform, been around four, four or five years now. We focus, when we talk about customer marketing, really in two things. When we think of it from a marketing perspective, marketing is talks 
demand generation, right? Getting new leads, helping close deals. That's the classic advocacy references. So doing references, customer stories, reviews, video testimonies, and so on. And referrals, which is what we're going to talk about, falls in there. It falls in demand generation. It basically helps you get um, new leads, <laughs> great leads, because it's one customer referring another. We'll talk about you know why that's great. Um, when we think about um, the other element of customer marketing, that's the more lifecycle marketing part that's relatively you know, newer for customer marketing. Bases you know, um, pioneered that from the get-go. So things like adoption campaign, retention marketing, upsell, cross-sell expansion. Bases one platform for all of that, and these are some of our customers. Um, another thing that you need to know about Base is that we're Israelis. <laughs> and as most of you probably know, there's a war now in Israel. Um, our team is split in Israel, US, and Europe, but I mean, half of the team is in Israel. So it's challenging times for Israel. Um, and we appreciate the support of all our customers and our friends. A lot have reached out to us. Um, on the one hand, I would say business as usual. We're working, we're delivering, we're growing. You know, that's it's part of part of Israel culture is keeping that sustained uh, um, um, operation, even during war times. Unfortunately, we've been to a lot of wars. Um, but yeah, I think for us, it's very important also to kind of uh, make sure that people know that what's happening in the world now isn't okay and, you know, terror is never acceptable. But yeah. um, a little bit about, and, and sharp kind of switch there, a little bit about um, how BASE works and then we'll dive into referrals specifically. So part of what BASE can do really is, is help you understand your customer's journey. So for example, one of the things that I'm sure that Michael will touch is who do we even start with? to ask is a referral, right? So, I mean, helping you find that data, which customer might be relevant is part of what base does. We'll connect to your CRM and to your community data and to your product usage data and Snowflake and whatnot, all your data and help you understand, you know, your customers, their journey and who's right for what type of activity. Then the second piece is, okay, once we know what we want to target with them with upsell, advocacy, referrals, how do you do that? And base allows you to do that in many ways, reaching out to them by email, by in-app, um, and you know, in a designated zone or portal, text and so on. And last, and, and I'm sure we'll talk about it as part of referrals, is how do you attribute? How do you know how much, if we talk about referrals specifically, how do you, can you know that 80 referrals were done, 12 of them were closed one, and we helped bring $840,000 of new revenue. So that's a little bit about, you know, how base works. Um, I won't dive into this, but kind of when we think about it, the platform has three elements. There's a CRM app, so internal teams can know, for example, with referrals, you push them into CRM and it opens an opportunity. And then there's, you know, admin and there's the customer facing that helps you get those referrals and any other activity. Some examples, but I kind of want to skip all this. Again, very result driven. I think that one of the things we've seen, unfortunately, this year with customer marketing teams, with marketing in general and everybody in general, but customer marketing as well, is um, a hit on you know the jobs. People were laid off. Teams were cut down dramatically, unfortunately. And part of it is the economy for sure. And companies are looking to be more efficient. And you know that that's a challenge for all teams and everything. Uh, and unfortunately, I think also the Procore team. But um, part of it is is really the the um, um, what is the story you tell internally. What is the story you tell, you know, to the CMO, to the CEO, to the CRO, to the chief customer officer? Like, how do we as customer marketers show the revenue impact? How can we say, and again, referrals is going to be an amazing one because um, so simple to, to kind of have the breadcrumbs. This customer brought this colleague, they qualify, they became a lead, great. So, I mean, it's very, I think we need to adopt much more of that mechanism of showing the revenue impact. And you know, these are some examples from our customers in the language they talk, but we really, really want to stress that and recommend that and happy to have a discussion with anybody that's challenging and showing their value and their impact and helping them build that internal story. It's super important. Customer marketing does so much and advocates so much for the customers and it doesn't, many times, we don't do enough to advocate for ourselves and tell our story the best way we can. Um, so let's dive into the main topic and, and you know, before I move it to, Michael, I want to share a few of the things that we've seen from our customers running this. So first of all, these are example of results of one of our customers. Um, an amazing, you know, referral was one of their initial use cases, amazing outcomes. This is in two and a half years. 
So they, they get an average, it's, it's pretty st st stable, 140 referrals per year. 60% um, of them are qualified. This is a great thing about referrals. Like many, not always, and Michael will share maybe his experience, but for us, we see many times referrals have a much higher conversion rate, right? Th than a regular lead, of course. And 60% and qualified leads is amazing for referrals. That's very high, but generally speaking, you have very high um, conversion rates to, to qualified. And in their case, you also have very high conversion to closed one. They've won 152 deals in, in two and a half years, kind of do the math there. Over a million revenue, their ACV is pretty small, but the ROI is there, you know, straight straight off. And, and when you think about it, you know, there's what is referral marketing. So in B2B, there's, or in general, there's two elements of referral marketing. One of them is when a customer submits a lead, submits a form, right? And tells you, I know Joe and he's a CIO with this company. We're friends, we're colleagues, whatever. I told him about your ERP software or CRM software or anything like that. And, you know, go ahead and, and, and kind of, you know, um, um, uh, use it. Uh, or we recommend that, you know, you talk to him. The other one is what we call affiliate marketing. I can share a link on social, by email, on text, on WhatsApp, doesn't really matter how I share that link right now, but it's a link with a UTM, so it's trackable. And you can know that Rona referred me, I sign up for a free trial, I sign up for a demo, I sign up for whatever it is, um, and we can track how many customers referred others through that link. Both of them are referrals, but there's a different format and way in how you track them. Um, some, you know, there's things you can do manually with spreadsheets and tracking, of course. Um, there's things you can do with automated tools, but Base supports both of these, but I mean, just so you know. Um, referrals, I think, is a real no-brainer for customer marketers. Should be. First of all, it's easy implementation. You don't have to connect with CRM. You don't have to integrate too many things. It's it's better if you do. It's easier. It's more streamlined and, you know, excited to hear what Michael has to say about that. But um, you could just upload a list of customers and do it. I mean, you, you could create a campaign, put a landing page for it, have them fill a form, no automation, right? Build a form on Google, whatever. Take a list of customers that you think from your, from your use your email marketing. Like you don't have to start it with a tool. And if you start with a tool, you can still do it very simple. It's not, it doesn't require a heavy lift. Uh, and you can test it. You can say, hey, you know, let's run one campaign. Let's run two campaigns and see what happens. You don't have to like the commitment in referral is much lower than anything else, while um, the outcomes should be faster and better than many other programs. And that's why we kind of super recommend that you try it out. Um, and we hear a lot of companies say, well, you know, it's not exactly for our customers. We, you know, it's not, it's not our DNA. I think the best, biggest thing is that many companies just don't ask. They don't ask their customers to, to do a referral. And there's ways of how to do that. And again, Michael is the expert and will share. I want to end with some examples. So examples for some of our customers, you can see they put it in their homepage, when you log into the software, they say, hey, you know, why don't you refer a friend and join the program? And I think that's great. Or they put it in their product. So you can see here, like in the product, they would have, and I kind of enlarged it in the bottom, but they would have in the product a place where people can just click and get, you know, $150 if they refer a friend. And they have these forms or pop-ups where they can do it. And, you know, so there's different ways of getting it. Um, there's different ways of tracking it. You can, you can track and reward customers for, um, submitting a referral for that being qualified so it's not junk and for a closed one. And you could only incentivize them on closed one or only incentivize them on qualification. It depends. You know, um, the, one of our customers, they started with only incentivizing on qualified, but then they moved to incentivizing on submissions because they saw that they have a very high percent of, of qualified and they just wanted to encourage more submissions. Um, so you could play with that, of course, as you go and track the ROI. And yeah, I think with that, we kind of end up very important to, to be able to track, to report, um, to kind of, you know, make sure that you can reward and then repeat and optimize. Hey, you know, what is our influence? Where is the referral working? How much revenue have we generated? Um, how much is it costing us in rewards? What do we want to double down on and so on? Yeah, the last thing I would say, um, we'll send a link in here. We'll put a link for um, a try and buy that we're doing. So like I said, Referrals is a pretty easy program to roll out, um, relatively low risk. Um, so we're doing a Thanksgiving special. Um, we'd love to have you kind of, you know, sign up for that, talk to our experts, create the program with them on a session. Um, you'll get a dedicated CSM to support you on that. And then you can have a two month free trial and just see if it works or not. 
um, measure the ROI, and then decide if you want to continue or not. So with that, Michael, you're on, and I'm off. And of course, again, feel free to ask questions as we go. I'll stop sharing. Okay, great. Uh, can you all see my screen? Okay, great. Um, feel free to stop me, Rona or Gal, if uh, there's any technical difficulties or questions along the way. Happy to stop throughout with any questions that come up. But um, just wanted to thank you for having me and letting me share kind of about um, this program that I've been running for the past uh, couple of years at Procore. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, referrals and how to drive revenue growth. So in terms of agenda, uh, I'll introduce myself a little bit more, kind of give an introduction to referrals specifically. Um, our, uh, our CMO here likes to do things in three. Uh, so I've got kind of three T's uh, for referral program success. Um, I'll share a little bit more of a case study and some examples from our sales and marketing team, um, give a little blueprint um, as this is a workshop and you know some takeaways that I think you can enact really quickly um, if you want to roll out a program. Um, some things that I've learned about incentivizations along the way, and then uh, just a conclusion. And again, feel free to, to stop throughout as this um, maybe a smaller group and happy to answer questions along the way. Um, so real quick about me, I've uh, been in customer marketing and advocacy for the last 10 years. Um, previously at Ignite and Blackboard, um, I did customer success for a short time at Trust Radius, um, which I'm really thankful that I did. I think um, anybody that's in customer marketing and advocacy, um, you know, I think it can be a benefit to experience uh, customer success success management, kind of managing a book of business, um, thinking about retention and upsell and cross-sell and things like that that we're often supporting uh, from the customer marketing side. Um, and then personally, uh, dad of three kids, pretty much if I'm not working, I'm on a soccer sideline uh, after work and on the weekends, um, which is definitely my joy outside of customer uh, customer marketing. All right, so uh, introduction to referrals, why, why they're important, kind of what they are. Um, so something that I've noticed a lot uh, is that customer referral and reference is very similar uh, in language. And so internally and externally, I think it, you know, they can be oftentimes confused, although um, as a practitioner, I think um, they're both very they're both very valuable in their own way, and they're both different. So, this is a slide that we use um, here at Procore that a customer referral is an introduction from existing customer to a prospect to help source new pipeline. Um, so, it happens earlier in the sales cycle. Customer reference, while equally as important, is validation from existing customer to a prospect that helps convert the pipe the existing pipeline to revenue. Um, so I think that's really important um, nuance that we use a lot here. Um, both of them are close to revenue. They're close to pipeline. They're helping the sales team. They're helping drive demand um, and super valuable in their own ways, but oftentimes confused. And uh, I'm quick to to maybe, um, you know, uh, let people know <laughs> if they've confused them and just educate as much as I can about the difference. Um, something that we've used here uh, is, is a quote, and this is a big part of our business case, and we we're starting with a referral program, is uh, that according to Saster, at least 20% of new customers should come from referrals and from word of mouth. Uh, now, this doesn't mean that 20% of your uh, new customers should come from your referral program, um, although that would be wonderful if it did. Uh, what it does mean is that you can ask questions maybe after a customer joins, like, how did you hear about us, Right. Um, on this article from Saster, which I've linked to, um, there's an example from HubSpot on there um, that says, you know, how did you hear about HubSpot? And I think 30% or so had said from word of mouth. Um, and so this, this example is saying that if 20% of your new customers are coming from word of mouth, that's a good thing for your brand, um, you know, that customers are talking about you, that there's brand awareness and that referrals are happening. Um, and kind of the neat thing a referral program is that you can tap into this, right? Um, and attribute a lot of that, um, you know, referral sourcing back to your program. Uh, and then a quote from uh, Jason at Saster, the more you share success with your existing customers, the more they will refer um, more of their friends to you. That's a great quote. And um, a lot of times we think of referrals in terms of, you know, being a B2C thing, right? Um, 
for watching TV, you know, YouTube, Google may have, you know, uh, refer your friends, get $15 off your bill or something like that. Think about it being very transactional, but I think there's a unique use case for B2B SaaS as well. Um, you know, they, it, you know, your, your customers are achieving value with your, you know, your solution, um, and staying with you for a long time that they may also refer their friends to you that you can tap into. So it's not just for B2C transactional, um, you know, transactions. And then uh, lastly, uh, you know, referral programs, I think, can be the fuel on the fire of word of mouth. As mentioned, 20% of your, um, you know, new customers coming from word of mouth, the referral programs can really be that fuel on the fire. Um, leads so hot, your sales and marketing team will need swim goggles uh, for the smoke. So like my daughter at a, at a fire pit. So um, I think that's a big thing that I've seen with referral programs is accelerating that word of mouth, putting fuel on the fire. Um, and I think a lot of practitioners and customer marketing advocacy see that, um, not just in referrals, but in all of our programs is that it's really, you know, when you attach it to your go-to-market strategy, it can really put fuel on the fire and accelerate, um, you know, your go-to-market strategy. Okay. Uh, any questions maybe, uh, from that first section, maybe on the strategy or, or why, um, you know, that was a bit about, you know, where we started in building our business case was looking at that 20% number from an industry perspective and feeling like uh, that was a target that we wanted to get to. I guess one question I have um, for you is how did you, did you need to create buy-in within management for this? Like the same stats that you were sharing with us, did you have to share it also internally or it kind of was super like clear to them? Yeah, we want to do this. No, it's definitely, um, you know, we use that 20% goal as saying, hey, this is the industry standard in SaaS, perhaps, um, and built that business case. And I'll share later, actually, um, you know, the six things that we used in that business case, which was, hey, currently we're at X percent of that based on the data, right, um, from what we knew. And if we can, um, you know, if we can... Uh, solve this problem or close that gap, then here's uh, the potential revenue impact or impact on pipeline and things like that. So we really use that industry stat, use some examples of other companies that we saw that had programs. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll kind of get into those six things later um, of how we built that business case. Cool. And I see Lauren raised her hand. I don't know if we can let her speak or she needs to write it in the chat. I'm not sure the format here. Uh, she should we can. Now. Just, okay. just can you guys hear me? We can. Yes. Okay, great. Um, sorry, I'm at a coffee shop, but there's mm -hmm. a little bit of background noise. But um, I liked your point about referral programs typically being B2C. Did you have to do any sort of like explaining or get buy-in when you were making this uh, a B2B initiative? And also, did you do any sort of rewarding for those referrals? Yeah, uh, great question. I'll certainly get into the incentives um, a little bit later, but um I think a big part of this is uh, obviously understanding the nuances of your own um, uh, addressable market and your own customers, your own audience. Um, Procore specifically works in the construction industry. And so we feel like there's a big opportunity uh, with networks, right? Um, you know, with, uh, you know, if you're building a building, right, you may have a general contractor that works with owners, specialty contractors, things like that, not to get too much specific into our industry, but um, it's a very network driven industry. Um, and I think a lot of us experienced that with our own industries. Um, so I think there was buy-in um, already that uh, this was a, you know, potentially big opportunity for us to tap into. Um, so if, you know, if your audience is very network driven, relationship based, right? Um, I think that can be a great starting point in building your case internally and, and finding those champions, right? Um, that also believe in referrals. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Um, well, I'll get into kind of these three T's of successful repro referral programs. And then, um, you know, some of the questions I'll get into later in terms of building the business case and incentives. But uh, three things that we've looked at uh, for successful referral programs are targeting. Uh, so defining who you're targeting for referrals, the timing, uh, which is defining when you will ask for referrals. And then finally, the tracking is how you will measure the uh, effectiveness of the impact of customer referrals. So three important T's when you're thinking about your program. Um, in terms of targeting, you know, we try and be as data driven in our approach as possible. And I think we've learned this from experience. I've learned it from experience over the past uh, year or so. 
um, is that uh, that term kind of spray and pray, right? Like marketing is is not great for referrals, right? Um, be as data driven as possible in your approach. I think it's going to be better uh, for the customer experience and better for the outcome. So um, some of the uh, ways that we target is, you know, looking at who our promoters are in net promoter surveys, CSAT surveys, um, maybe customers that have strong product usage. Uh, this can oftentimes come from the product team or product marketing team, right? Who are your super users? Who are your power users that are getting into the product every single day that are seeing a lot of value from it? Um, who are customers that have gone through a renewal cycle that, you know, saw the value in year one, year two, year three, that continue to renew and are seeing value? Um, the champions are the power users. I think this is oftentimes identified by sales or customer success within your CRM can be really useful. Uh, customers in your online community or uh, event participants. So we have a big annual event every year. Um, so customers that are investing to come, you know, learn and meet and network uh, are oftentimes great candidates for this. So uh, we just finished our big event uh, last month and um, it was a great time to be in person and talk about our advocacy programs, talk about our referral programs um, kind of in person. Uh, participation in other acts of advocacy. This is a big one for me since I also oversee a lot of these other advocacy programs is who are your customers that are uh, serving as references, that are writing online reviews, that are participating in betas, maybe an advisory board, um, participating in case studies, speaking in events. Um, they may also uh, be willing to uh, willing to provide referrals. And then uh, the last one is just asking your customers. Um, Jason in the Saster article talks a lot about this is that, you know, you just need to ask um, is that uh, that's the biggest thing is that a lot of times there's just not that culture of um, referrals being asked for in existence. Um, so this so is an example. Of, that, just yeah, yeah, yeah. We can answer to. So I'm targeting yeah. two things. I totally agree with the ask part. And, and I think, you know, um, again, companies could just even try it you know, if, if they think they'll get resistance from internal teams, they could probably try to just do a small ask to a small group and see that that works, bring the results and then get more. But when you think about targeting, my, the question would be, how do you think about personas in the sense of, and again, in your business, you, you have, in every business, there's decision makers, maybe C-levels, VPs, C, you know, and then there's, let, let's call them the practitioners, right? The people who use the platform, use the tool. When you think about referral programs, have you thought about those two, would you shy away from one audience than another? Would you just create a different campaign? Like, what were, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, for uh, for us, how, how I would kind of do that is, um, and I've got an example and kind of a case study in a few slides, um, is that I think uh, maybe if you're asking an executive or asking a customer advisory board member or something like that, you know, I think the trust, and you you shared about this too, um, is that trust and that foundation of trust is so important when you're asking for a referral. Um, I think it's honestly one of the more uh, difficult asks in advocacy, perhaps, right, um, to get the results that you're wanting versus writing a review, maybe a little bit of an easier ask uh, at times. And so certainly having that relationship built already is super important, especially if you're asking an executive. Um, so I would say, you know, if you're going up market, perhaps if you're going to a C level executive audience, like somebody that has a relationship already in existence, you're going to get a better result than me sending a marketing email. Uh, you know, it's probably going to get glossed over. Um, and oftentimes that could come from a customer success manager that could happen from an existing account executive that has spent, you know, months building a relationship with that team. Um, and that, you know, so who asks, I think is super important. Um, but I've also seen, you know, we may be able to target practitioners, uh, if folks that are in the product every day, folks that are in our community, folks that are engaged in our advocacy program, uh, you know, we may be able to ask in one to many uh, sort of audience and get and get positive results. Yeah, and I see Haley asked the same question, actually. So, hey, Haley, and yeah. <laughs> um, so, but you did you, I guess, just to double click on that. So you, you're did you run campaigns or try to get referrals from like the more BPC level or or have you not? Uh, so the, they would be included, but I would say the results have been better when those are asked by relationship owners, okay. customer success so just, managers, it, account executives, things like that. You change the channel. So you run yeah. the program, you change the channel. Okay. That's yeah, a great, exactly. good, good advice. Thank you. Yep. Excellent. Um, and so I'll just share an example from our own program. Uh, this is a screenshot from our reference survey, uh, which I think has been really valuable to our program. Um, so we daisy chain this off of CSAT and uh, different 
um, you know, different channels to get customers into our reference program. And then as part of that survey, we may ask them which other acts of advocacy they may be willing to participate in. And so we actually added this a little bit after we started our program that was like, hey, are you willing to provide referrals, right? Simply asking. And then that kind of builds our audience for uh, referral campaigns, right? Uh, is that, you know, a customer has said they're willing, you know, they're willing to provide referrals and that gives us some confidence when we're reaching out to these folks. Um, or this may give us fuel to build relationships with CSMs or account executives and say, hey, your customer said, you know, they're willing to provide referrals. Like this would be a great time to ask perhaps. Um, and so this gives us a little bit more intel and data-driven approach uh, with our referrals. Um, so in terms of timing, um, you know, mapping it to the customer lifecycle, um, mapping it to those touch points is really important. So um, after a successful implementation uh, can be really important. Uh, you know, obviously all of these things need to happen in the post-sale journey. Um, you know, after somebody rates you highly on NPS, I think can be good as well. Uh, this this third one, you know, customers that purchase agreement, I think can be really interesting uh, for programs. Um, and a good way to partner with your sales team is that this could be an opportunity for a give get, right? Uh, maybe a maybe a concession is being provided, maybe a discount is being provided. Um, this can be a great way to kind of build advocacy and referrals right in, into that contract. Um, and uh, it's not like a hard line, you know, it's kind of a, a handshake agreement, if you will, but hey, you know, we're giving you this concession in return, would you be willing to introduce me to, you know, a couple folks, right, um, in our total addressable market? I think that can be really useful. Um, In-person events, as I mentioned, uh, in-application or online community channels, this is uh, evergreen. And as we work, worked on this program, one of my colleagues said, you know, there's value in the view, right? Um, and so having your referral program in places where customers are seeing it, they may not have top of mind someone that they know right then uh, that could be a good candidate for referral, but uh, three months down the road, they may meet somebody in an event, right? Um, and then they have in the back of their mind, oh, you know, you all have a referral program and then they may come back, right? Uh, and provide that referral. We've certainly seen that. So I think building some awareness, uh, getting some views on your program is valuable. Um, you know, certainly as part of a, a customer advocacy program, if you have a tool like BASE, you know, where you have an engaged community. I think that can be super powerful to run gamification and, you know, uh, short-term contest uh, to really, you know, boost some of the competi healthy competition, if you will, you know, drive a certain number of referrals uh, in a certain amount of time. Uh, I don't have any slides about this, uh, but a while back in a previous role, I ran like a 30 referrals in 30 days for my 30th birthday or something silly like that. Um, but it was a fun way to engage with customers that I had a relationship with. Um, and we surpassed that amount. Um, and, you know, it was, it was a way to get a lot of referrals in the door quickly. And, um, you know, percentage of that, uh, obviously, uh, you know, is going to close. So um, in succession, following other acts of advocacy, I think is, is helpful. And then um, probably the most important one uh, is via partnership with sales and customer success teams. Uh, I can't iterate about, um, enough how relationships is so foundational in referrals. Um, and, you know, it's so key to our program is building, you know, myself building as kind of managing this program, building relationships with account executives that are, you know, spending time with customers and CSMs as well, um, involving them in asking, uh, I think is super valuable. Uh, and yeah, then I finally, think we that, yeah, sorry, go we ahead. Have, we have another question. So, sure. so on that specific motion, like you said, the relationship is important. So we have a question like, we'd love to know if you have any tips on scaling and the motion, you know, of leveraging that trusted account manager um, or, or, you know, CSM ops manager. Um, yeah. Like how, how do you get them to ask, you know, if, if the customer is willing to refer? Um, yeah. Yeah. So something, um, you kind of mentioned the affiliate marketing. I think this is where like a tool uh, can be really useful and some of the automation. Um, so we've uh, we've taken like a link based approach, um, and I'll get that get into that in a minute. Um, but you can also do it with a form based approach. Um, is just having a form, you know, that your that your account executive can fill out or uh, your customer success manager can fill out or that they can share with their customer, right? Um, 
you know, where where a referral can be filled out. And then that's tracked back to the account executive. Um, you know, maybe all referrals that are sourced by that salesperson go to them, right? As opposed to, you know, if you're in a larger organization, right? Maybe they stay with that person that generated the referral, right? And that's going to incentivize the sales team or that salesperson to drive more referrals from their uh, from their accounts, from their book of business. Right. Maybe it's a spiff that you do for a certain amount of time with CSMs, right? Whoever drives the most referrals, right? And that's a way to highlight the CSM to management and executives of saying, hey, the CS, you know, this CSM is driving, you know, pipeline and revenue through their book of business, right? Uh, which is awesome. Um, so I think using automation, this is where the automation and the technology piece come in, is using a form, using links, you know, maybe it's a UTM that goes back, you know, depending on the size of your organization, it could be a UTM for each CSM, right? That they share with their accounts and then that gets tracked back and so you can see in your crm oh you know uh this came from runo etc right um so that's i think where the automation comes into play yeah man. totally and Haley, double click in what uh, michael said that's what we've seen as well so if you run some kind of spiff if you say hey this quarter it's part of their mbo or their targets for the csms and, and their chief customer officer is kind of enforcing that and then you share their you both make it competitive leaderboards whatever hey this csm is you know he's already done or she's already done five referrals and, you know, things like that. Um, and maybe, you know, the winner, whatever, travels to, I don't know, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and um, also having, um, like, sharing them the results. Hey, your referrals helped us get, whatever, $1 million of new business. Like, really getting back, acknowledging their, their support. So, yes, it's harder because it's like you have a step in the way. It's not you running the referral to the customer. You run through, you run a campaign to your internal team, CSMs or whoever, and then they run a, a campaign to the rest. But but um, um, I think, yeah, that's what we see. If you want to scale it, that you, you have to do some kind of campaigns automation to mm -hmm. make it happen. Yep. I would say also to add to that is keep getting in front of those account managers. Try and join their meetings, their calls, uh, and reminding them of the program. I think that's super important. Absolutely. Great. Um, and then, then the last T is just tracking, um, and this one's really valuable, you know, taking a number, not being afraid to take a goal, take a number um, in terms of impact on pipeline, impact on revenue. Um, I know, um, you know, just, uh, yeah, staying, staying close to that, uh, staying close to that revenue. I think, um, you know, personally, before I got into customer marketing, I was in demand generation. And so I feel like I'm kind of wired into that, right? Uh, you know, goals uh, around pipeline and different things like that. So, um, but I think it, you know, it's super valuable and you can report out monthly, quarterly, annually, you know, hey, we impacted this much pipeline, this this much revenue. And I think um, for customer marketing, that's really important to do um, because intrinsically may, we may see the value of all the stuff that we're doing, but to have hard numbers, um, you know, to share with executives and things like that, I think is really important. Um, and then, uh, you know, as Gal mentioned, like, you know, referrals are known to be less expensive than other lead sources with a higher close rate. I would say this is kind of a next level of maturity from these programs is where you can actually get into that tracking of, hey, referrals close faster than other lead sources or at a lower cost per lead. Um, and I think that's kind of the North Star of where um, a lot of these programs can go uh, maybe in a crawl, crawl walk run, right? Um, as you get into walking and running is like, hey, these referrals are closing, closing faster. You can get more investment into them as well. So uh, just a couple of quick examples. This is a screenshot from our program. A um, couple of things I've already mentioned. We use kind of a link-based approach where the customer can, the customer advocate can create their own link, share it with, um, share it with friends, share it with those in their network. Um, uh Really important thing is that we do get opt-in from the prospective customer to show intent uh, for the person being referred. Uh, so what that means is that, uh, let's say current customer shares their link, uh, prospective, their friend, prospective customer um, fills out the form for more information. What that does for us is it shows intent from the prospect, right? Um, it kind of weeds out low quality leads, right? That, um, you know, if I'm pulling out a referral, I could refer anybody, I could refer a family member, I could refer, you know, someone that may not be in the total addressable market, right? So there's got to be some checks and balances, right, to weed out low quality leads, um, or else sales may be turned off to, oh, all these referrals are not good, they're not converting, things like that. So 
having some sort of check and balance in there. Um, and I think there are a number of different ways that you can do that. This is how we have chosen to do it, um, is to actually get the friend or the uh, prospective customer to fill out an interest form uh, based on you know the customer's uh, link or, or um, email. So uh, yeah, like I said, what this does, it creates uh, high value leads, uh, and also more compliant to data privacy guidelines like GDPR and CCPA. Um, I think kind of the days of filling out a friend, filling out a form for your friend uh, with their name and email address uh, is uh, probably going away. <laughs> um, and so I think, you know, you could also have a form and then check a box, right? Of saying, my friend is giving me permission to share their information. So there's a lot of different ways to uh, skin the cat, so to speak, um, but also having the prospect uh, show intent themselves, right? I think is uh, one they one way that we've chosen to do it. And what I've seen over time is that um, you know uh, account development, business development representative, sales, you know, they're quick to call on referrals within a short amount of time. They're not going to let them sit for days uh, because they know that they're higher quality. So we we'll just recommend having some sort of uh, some sort of check and balance in place for quality. Um, and then two examples from our sales team. Um, these are. Quotes, obviously redacted the companies um, involved, but we've been trying to get X company on for a long time. The president was hard to get a hold of, but thanks to this referral, we were able to get them to the table. Um, and that was a quote that I was able to use and just um, build some internal awareness and promotion of the program um, and one of our kind of biggest success stories of the program this year. And then um, so their customer has been a big champion throughout the evaluation um, already introduced me to a few companies in my territory. I've never been able to get traction with. He's going to be super helpful going forward. So uh, this was just in conversation that I had with a sales rep. Um, and this, you know, I can kind of use this, take this to build more champions with sales managers and others um, just to build that culture, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, where, you know, maybe there's a point in the life cycle, right? When it's um, maybe end of the sales process, when they're going to implementation, or going from implementation to uh, being matched with a customer success manager, right? Are there points in times where there's some milestone uh, that, you know, someone that has a trusted relationship can ask, hey, do you mind introducing me to so-and-so company? Um, and then you as the program manager have those automation pieces in place, have that form available uh, where that team can utilize what you've created, right? And I think that's how ultimately you can scale these programs and um, because it can be very manual early on. Um, and I think getting those tools and technology and processes and automation in place can help you then scale this um, more widely. One element on that before yeah. we dive in. Sure. Um, and also making sure we know we have 15 minutes. So okay. we might need to fast track here. Sure, but, sure. Uh, regarding, um, I think it's an interesting um, also phenomenon or, or you know kind of concept where you think of, a person that was referred will then become a refer a referee themselves, mm -hmm. right? So when you think about it, you can create a flywheel where you're saying, hey, you know, I've got these, what are 50 new customers referred. It's the easiest thing to reach out to them and say, remember that you were referred to us and, you know, you're now a customer and you're happy customers, we hope, we hope or we'll only reach out to happy customers. With that, we'd love to know if you have other people to refer it's the conversion rate on that is super high. Like they, they would, they came in for for all they're going to for somebody as well. So, yeah. I love that. And I think about the types of customers that you're getting from referrals, right? Like they're connected to your existing customers and you can really create this, uh, you know, build out, right. Um, there's probably some interesting data. I wish I had it just on the lifetime value, right. Um, or, you know, uh, of referrals, right. They probably stay longer. That's kind of that next there is. level. Actually there yeah. is stats okay. that referral retain longer. Okay. You're right. There you go. Yep. So you're attracting, you know, better customers that are going to stay longer, which is awesome. So cool. Yeah. Uh, so um, real quick, and just I'll leave some time at the end for questions, but uh, you know, blueprint for referral success. Uh, this is what we used when we were starting out, right? Um, you know, what is our current problem? You know, we felt like we were leaving pipeline and revenue on the table by not having a formal referral program in place and asking customers for referrals. Um, you know, we kind of propose a solution, right? Uh, we're going to create this end-to-end -end, uh, experience. It's going to be better for our customers. It's going to be better for our processes. Um, it's going to create a scalable infrastructure for customers to refer peers. Um, show the cost of the current state, right? Um, you know, use some, you know, uh, you can work with the, the data team, um, revenue team to think about, you know, 
what is the cost of the current state? How much do we think, you know, we're kind of leaving on the table uh, by not asking for referrals? Is there competitive risk in place? Are there, you know, other companies, are there competitors in your industry that are generating these high value referrals, you know, these customers that are staying longer? Um, use some of that in your business case. Number four is, uh, you know, what is the desired state of the new solution and what's the path to get there? What's the crawl, walk, run? What is, um, what is, what are referrals going to look like three months from now, six months from now, you know, next year? Um, you know, piloting with a small team, I think is really valuable. You know, pick a team, maybe, um, you know, that, uh, you know, depending on the size of your organization, it could be a team that maybe has missed pipeline numbers recently or something like start with them and see if you can, um, you know, move the needle and pilot with a small team. This doesn't, I would say, uh, you know, don't boil the ocean here. Uh, that's going to be really hard to do. Um, so crawl, walk, run, show, um, you know, show the impact early on by starting small. Show the anticipated business impact, as I mentioned, you know, taking a number, right? Could be a small number, but it's still going to be impactful. Um, you know, how much pipeline are you going to drive in the first, uh, you know, first quarter, first year, and then report on that, right? Um, be diligent about like, make a dashboard for it that you can roll up to, um, you know, to management, to executives. Um, and then finally, just create those benchmarks, create those milestones. What what does it look like to get like from crawl to walk, from walk to run? Um, and then, you know, does walk mean getting technology in place, right? Uh, to help the scale, right? If you've been doing it more manually in the crawl phase, um, does run look like taking the program global, right? Um, where you're going into new regions with this. Um, so I think just setting that vision, I think is really important and something that we've tried to do um, along the way throughout the program. So this was kind of our blueprint. Um, and also uh, this is really useful if you're creating the business case, right? If you're, if you haven't had a referral program in place and you're creating, you know, creating a business case of, Hey, I want to start this, want to pilot this, I think it can impact pipeline and revenue. Um, and then uh, just real quick, I want to touch on incentivization because this is part of referrals. So uh, to me, you know, the saying goes kind of your network is your net worth. Uh, and I think that's hugely valuable with referrals. Um, you know, I think while incentives are helpful, especially in B2B SaaS, like we're not talking about something that you ordered online, you know, and you're going to get, you know, your friend gets $10, you get $10. Like a lot of us are in, um, you know, B2B SaaS where, um, you know, perhaps longer sales cycles, perhaps more expensive, you know, perhaps there's a buying committee, things like that. Um, you know, referrals can't be bought and sold. Um, you know, I think our network is so much of our net worth, um, I think, you know, for a lot of us. And so there's got to be that foundation of trust with your brand and an established relationship with your team. Um, I think strategically, um, as much of the tactics uh, as you may want to roll out, this is the strat this is like the bedrock strategy. I think is just, um, you know, and that's why having someone that owns a relationship with a customer, it's all the more meaningful having them ask because they built that trusted relationship. And, um, you know, for some, that could be customer marketing. Maybe you built a strong relationship with your advocates and that's awesome. Uh, for some, it could be, um, you know, the AE or the CSM that's been on QBRs that's spent the year building value, right? So how can you put, you know, your tools and your program, uh, customer marketing program, um, in the hands of uh, your colleagues uh, across the revenue organization. So um, for incentives, you know, tying back to brand loyalty or product adoption as much as possible. Um, maybe it's offering professional services, right? Uh, if you charge professional services in exchange for referrals. Um, you know, as mentioned, kind of a give get during contract negotiations or renewals. Um, kind of a choose your own adventure on gifting platforms, I think can be effective and tango and things like that. Um, charitable don donations related to the industry you serve, I think can be really impactful. Um, and then uh, something we do is like a double-sided reward for a customer and a friend. I think there's some uh, research out there that uh, this causes, um, you know, the conversion rate to be higher when the friend also gets something for sitting for a demo, perhaps, right, along with the customer. And um, maybe the customer who gives the referral gets uh, a lower amount uh at, you know, when their friend sits for a demo, as opposed to the entire amount, perhaps when the deal closes, because that's, um, you know, that's not entirely on them. That's also on the sales team to kind of execute the referral and close it, um, things like that. So there are things that you can do upfront, um, maybe as opposed to waiting and, and 
offering incentive at the end of the deal closing. So um, this is something that I would say use, you know, your marketing creativity, tie it back to your brand as much as possible. Um, there's a lot of different options here uh, in terms of incentives. Um, you know, it's not just about offering money. I think while that can be useful, um, there's a lot of other things that you can do that are cool. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a trip to your annual conference, right? Um, if you pay for tickets and travel and things like that. So tons of opportunities here. And we uh, are trying to take the approach of like choose your own adventure as much as possible. So. Yeah, I think just, just yeah, for that incentivization, I would say, it also depends on your audience, right? If, if it's more B2C and you're, you, you have a lot, you know, hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of customers, yes, you could be a little more transactional, maybe with the practitioners. I still, you know, uh, subscribe to Michael's approach when it goes to, you know, enterprise, when it goes to C-level VPs and whatnot. And I think, you know, there's, when Michael kind of alluded to it, there's that path in the middle where you can say, hey, you know, we're giving them, for example, points. So not, not transactional, every every referral gets whatever, $100 or $1,000, but let's give them points. And, and in that journey, then yes, we'll give them a free ticket to our annual event. We'll, we'll have them meet our management. We'll, you know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll send them a thank you that isn't, you know, here's $100, but we'll send them wine and, a, a, you know, whatever dinner for, you know, the family or whatever. So, I mean, make it much more, relationship and long-term and strategic versus making it, hey, you know, you do it, you get it, like super transactional. But again, with SMBs, with with more like, say, junior people, transactional works. You know, we want to say that as well. Yep. Great. Um, so just in conclusion, um, you know, I really see referrals as something that you can build a culture around within your company, uh, really build it into the life cycle. Um, you know, arm your sales team, as I mentioned, customer success, marketing campaigns, kind of with the tools to ask for referrals. Um, you know, I think while referrals are often thought of as a staple in B2C, and certainly they are, um, they can also be valuable in B2B um, and in SaaS. So part, as mentioned, partner, partner closely with your counterparts across the revenue team that have closer relationships that maybe we do on the marketing side. Um, you know, they can be really valuable. Referrals can be valuable in entering new markets. Um, Going back to that SAS article, I think he says by a $3 million run rate, like these motions should be going in terms of generating word of mouth. Um, and, you know, if you're entering a new uh, region or market or audience uh, where you may not have brand awareness, referrals can be really valuable. Um, think about customer lifecycle, strategically map the referral ask and other advocacy asks uh, into those different points of the life cycle, document that um, and uh, you know, educate your counterparts on where those asks are being made, um, automate that and build processes around that as much as possible. And then lastly, just start, start small. Um, don't be afraid to take, take a number for pipeline and for revenue. Um, you know, that, uh, you know, I believe so much in what customer marketing and advocacy practitioners do. Um, you know, but, but at the end of the day, I also want hard numbers, uh, tied to my programs as much as I can. Um, and I think referrals is a great one to have. I think references is another great one to have. I think um, a lot of, the, you know, there's so much technology and different um, things that help with that today. Um, but I think referrals is a really strong direct pipeline and revenue driver um, that can be tied to your customer marketing advocacy programs. Cool. So first of all, thank you so much, Michael. I think this was super detailed, super interesting. <laughs> Um, I've learned stuff. I'm sure others have learned stuff. We had great, you know, uh, um, questions. We still have a couple of minutes. So if people want to just put questions in the Q&A or just raise their hand and ask the questions directly, uh, happy to take those. But appreciate, you know, your time and sharing this very structured, you know, process and referral programs. Um, I loved it. And I'm sure I think others loved it as well. Excellent. Yeah, and you're getting a lot of feedback from the comments. Rona, anything from your end? Michael, anything from your end to find a, to sign us off? Not from my end, but Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. I definitely learned some uh, some new stuff. Great. Um, well, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Ask me questions on there. I'm happy to answer any questions about our program. Would love to hear about your program. I think um, it's something that's evolving all the time. So would love to learn and you know, grow alongside everybody in this community. Yeah. And again, we'll send an email follow up with the recording. 
Uh, Michael, is it okay to share the deck? I think so. Yeah, yeah, it should be fine. With the deck, uh, with with um, you know the link to the Saster article. I also would love that article by Jess Lampkin. So with the link to that, um, and you know we we share the link here for the webinar that we have also next week. So sign up to that, and we're happy to meet and the link to a trial. So we're happy to meet customers and kind of dis like discuss your programs and see if you want to try something out. Um, and have a great closing of 2023. Good luck in 2024. Hey, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.